Some people are concerned about the privacy invasion features of smart meters. Others are worried about adverse health effects. But the only way to opt out is to jump through hoop after hoop after hoop after hoop after hoop. Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. If you haven't already heard my previous report, check it out. You can do a search for why opt out of smart meters. It lays some important groundwork. My report tells of a British company called Onzo that sells software enabling utility companies to create an extra revenue stream by marketing data collected by smart meters. I even include a short excerpt from an Onzo video. But that's not the greatest potential threat to utility company customers. Health activists are linking radio frequency radiation from smart meters to brain fog, ear ringing, and headaches. And those symptoms are minor compared to what's included in a statement from the director of the Institute for Health and the Environment at the University of Albany in New York. It links RF to cancer. Duke Power, the electric utility that serves my area, claims the radiation from a smart meter is much less than that from a cell phone. Organizations that do not have an interest in selling your data to marketers have reported 100 to 1,000 times the RF level of mobile phones. So let's get down to opting out. The process varies from state to state, if it's even allowed at all. Even if you do opt out, you may still get a smart meter but the part that generates the potentially dangerous radiation is disabled. In effect, the device will operate like a standard meter. Originally, Duke Power wanted to charge a hefty one-time fee and a continuing monthly fee as a punishment, well, excuse me, that should be a deterrent for anyone opposing the installation of a smart meter at their home. I first informed them I wanted to opt out over a year ago. Recently, they told me I had to do it again but this time they mentioned a new option from the state. The North Carolina Utilities Commission had approved a medical-based no-fee exemption. In the words of page 14, paragraph 2 of an order approved by the state agency, Duke is required to, quote, remove the customer charges for those customers who provide the company with a notarized statement from a medical physician licensed by the North Carolina Medical Board that the customer must avoid exposure to RF emissions to the extent possible to protect their health. Easier said than done. First, there's a problem of getting a notary public to come to your doctor's office. The first notary I looked up said she was too busy. The second agreed to 11.45 a.m. on Friday, November 30th. I arrived at my doctor's office a few minutes early. No sign of the notary. I left a message on her voicemail every few minutes while I went door to door in the medical park looking for an office with a notary. My doctor kindly said he would be available all day and went back to his other duties. In the past, I probably would have panicked at that point, but I felt, let's call it, an impression that I should try across the parking lot at another building maybe several hundred feet away. On my way, a friendly sort of guy who turned out to be a doctor started walking with me and talking about the weather. I explained my predicament and asked if he had a notary at his office. He did, and within ten minutes or so, my doctor signed the statement, and it was notarized, all at no charge. The last thing I wanted to do was to have the document get lost. So I sent it off by certified mail with a tracking number at one of those mini post offices based in a convenience store. For something like ten days, I waited for the return receipt and tried to track the letter. In the meantime, Duke Power sent me their official three-page form to fill out, even though they had not mentioned it previously. Frankly, I'm not concerned. I've examined the State Utility Commission's order, and it says nothing about Duke being able to require their own opt-out form with additional certifications. The utility has overstepped its bounds. Under the law, I have just as much right to design my own form as long as it complies with the order. Finally, I went back to the post office in the convenience store. They knew nothing about where the letter was and sent me back to the closest real post office, which was able to track it to the destination city, but not to the destination itself. 
I was told it was up to me to follow it up further and to stay away from fake post offices. Turns out my receipt was just delivered to my home mailbox that afternoon and it was signed by a Duke representative. I'm hoping this is the last update I'll have to give about my experience with opting out of a smart meter. But if there are any significant complications, I'll let you know. We've got to stand together on this. At any point, I could have easily given up on the hoop jumping process. It was so intimidating. But I kept jumping for the sake of my family's health. I hope things work out for you in your state. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. Thank you.